Hi guys, so like Wild said in the background, I'm excited to be here today and being part of the Fitness Conference 2021. Um, like a little bit of background, I just qualified as a personal trainer with COVID Fitness School and have learned a lot for myself and can't wait to help my clients further in the future online to a happier and healthier lifestyle. And just a little bit about why I chose my topic today. Because since we went into the first lockdown in March 2020 and was out of work due to the gym's close, I did find some days were a struggle uh, with my mental health and a big impact. Uh, so with no motivation, I decided to start walking every day as a daily routine and found that it actually really helped my mental health. Um, so what I'm going to show you today is how to, the benefits of walking for your physical and mental health and to bring it back more fun and enjoyable into your routine daily. So I hope you enjoy. So we're going to start. Why, why being outside? benefits us, not just physical health, but our mental health as well. For my experience, time spent outdoors have a positive impact on my mental health during lockdown and having so much free time now since gyms are closed. Introducing walking daily into my routine to keep me sane and active. Uh, reducing anxiety levels and then boost Boosting our moods are just two benefits that are linked with spending time in nature. And so there are just two benefits. I have a PowerPoint, so I'll go through each slide and each topic of what we're going to go talk about today. And um, benefits when you walk. You can call, so for instance, saying going on a long walk can do wonders for boosting our moods. And if you want to pop into a chat, just what, what kind of sceneries or walkways would you prefer to do um, during lockdown? And what something, like say going to the nearest parks, if you have the nearest parks or the beach, walk beside water, uh, or just even just around the block of your local neighborhood. Yeah, walking near water, nearby. Beaches are great for those social. Thank you very much. And so I'm gonna just pop up on the slide is PowerPoint. The woods is also a great one as well. Thank you guys. So, oh, just going to start my PowerPoint and hope you can all see that. So, oh, to start. so why you walking is good for our mental health. So to start the slideshow. And we're going to start off why you walking for good health. There's going to be a few pictures as well. So to improve or maintain overall health, so as to improve just your cardiovascular, your pulmonary system, your lungs and your heart, and just 30 minutes every day can do a lot for our physical and mental health. Can increase cardio fitness, strengthen bones, reduce body fat and boost muscle power and endurance. And walking is also free. So you don't need any limited equipment needed. You just need a pair of runners and just yourself and at the outdoors. It can also reduce the risk of developing conditions such as heart disease, type due to diabetes, osteoporosis and some cancers. So it's also control or 
maintain the de development of conditions. Um, last one is requires minimum equipment and can be done at any time of the day. So any time of the day, in the morning, the afternoon, or even in the evening after work is probably the best time because if you're busy and you're in front of a screen for the whole day, it's nice to just get out for that 30 minutes and clear the head and not think of work or anything like that as well. But what the walking for good health. Next slide. So the health benefits. When we walk, you carry your own body weight. This is known as weight bearing exercises. So you're just, it's a body weight exercise. So you're carrying your own weight and it's brilliant because you don't need any equipment like the other forms of exercise. Um, a good walk can do wonders for your mental health. Well-being, uh, improve self-perception, self-esteem, it boosts your mood, sleep quality, so it improves your sleep as well, so you have a good schedule and quality of sleep, reduces stress and anxiety levels. So great benefits for your health, physical and mental. So I'll go back to that one for a second. So studies have shown that physical activity, active people have up to a 30% reduced risk of becoming depressed and doing some sort of physical activity helps those who are struggling with depression or anxiety or just feeling their mood is low to recover. So it does help a little bit as well as that. Okay, then on to the next one. So for 30 minutes, walking for 30 minutes a day. To get the health benefits, try it for at least 30 minutes as briskly as you can on most days of the week. So what does brisk mean? Brisk means that you can still talk, but not sing. So you're still able to hold a conversation, but not sing your favorite song. And you may be puffing slightly. Moderate activities such as walking pose, little health risks, but if you have any medical, so if you have underlying issues or medical conditions, just please make sure to check in with your GP or doctor before starting a new exercise program of any kind, just to make sure. And for health benefits. So this is what I found is when you are feeling low, especially during lockdown and stuff and gyms are closed and you just lack in motivation and the social aspect aspect and um, social interaction as well. So building physical activity into your life. Um, if it's too difficult to walk for 30 minutes at one time, try do regular bouts. So of 10 minutes, three times a day, gradually building it it up to long, longer sessions. Um, however, if it's your goal, goal to lose weight, so if you have a goal to lose weight, you will need to do physical activity for 30 minutes each day. Um, just well, even twice a day, break it down. You can do 10 minutes in the morning, like say three minutes, three, mi three times a day. 10 minutes bouts. Um, you will still achieve this by starting with small bouts of activity throughout your day. Increasing these as your fitness and endurance improves. So mainly it's just the best is recommended is 30 minutes a day at one time. But if you are starting out fresh of exercising, just break it down nice and small, about 10 minutes, three times a day. And your own fitness will improve with your endurance as well when you increase it. So some suggestions to build walking into your daily routine include, so 
what I found when I was starting last year, there was building into my routine where, for instance, I was, I set alarm at the same time each day and I was going the walk at that same time. And that increased then as weeks went on, I just got into habit of putting the runners on and go for my walk. And it really like made a really good impact to my life and a good routine as well. So if you're using public transport and you live in the city, if you get off one stop earlier from your work or your location, you're going to and just walk the rest of the way. So you're getting that more extra steps of your day. And um, if you can walk to the local shops and don't drive, so if you only live 15 minutes from the local shop, instead of driving to the local shop, just um, walk to it and that increasing your step count as well. Walking the dog, um, the best companionship on your daily walk because they have to be walked every day. So they need to be walked and they can walk themselves sometimes. So what best way is to walk with your dog? And set uh, step challenges to keep you motivated. So if you're living in the house with your family or your friends and say you have a little challenge board and you're doing like a step challenge of different step counts of 10,000 a day, and then you track your progress in the house. So that keeps it interesting as well. So that's just some ways of keeping routine into your daily activities. And make walking part of your routine. So like I said, it's the same. What the previous side is trying to make walking a routine example, like a setting your alarm. So in the morning, if you prefer the morning walks, is setting the alarm for eight o'clock, nine o'clock, and just stick into that time. But if you don't walk, there's plenty of hours in the day. So just pick a nice evening walk or an afternoon lunchtime walk. Just pick the same time every day and it'll build into a habit. Remember you use the same amount of energy, no matter what time of the day you walk. So do what is convenient for you. So you're doing it at your own pace and it's not a competition. So you're just at your own leisure, you're building your fitness and you're increasing your endurance and overall health. You may find that asking someone walk, like an example, a walking buddy to walk with you. I know at this time, like social distance as well, but it's still, you can still walk with social distance. So even just asking your neighbor or your friend and making it a regular occurrence as well every week will help to improve your walking. You may find that keeping a diary or logging your walk will make it easier to track your progress on a daily basis. So keeping a diary and ticking off, I've done my walk today and then vice versa. Etc. Good way to keep track. So another way to keep track is a Fitbit or a smartwatch while walking. So the Fitbit measures the number of steps you take. So it's a good way also like the challenge board in your house is the recommended daily step count. So you're introducing another measurement of equipment is a watch or a Fitbit and it's just measuring your steps so you want to try beat your steps every day so it's a good way a little challenge every day and weekly you can measure you can use it to measure your movement throughout the day and compare it to other days of the week so it's like a little competition for yourself to keep you motivated to get moving more the recommended number of steps or per day to achieve health benefits is 10,000 steps or more. So if you can only do 10,000 steps or you can do less, at least then you're still getting 
each day you're just progressing on with another step count. So comfortable intensity for walking. So for most, most people, there is a little difference in the amount of energy used by walking a kilometer or running a kilometer. It's just that walking takes longer and um, but it burns the same amount of energy. Plan to cover a set distance each day and monitor how long it takes you to walk this distance. So if you're planning on walking a kilometer today and just monitor it on your watch or your Fitbit or your phone and see how long it takes you to walk that kilometer. And then the next day, try beat that time. And then if you go again the third day, you could be a little bit faster. So at least you're tracking your progress and how many distance you cover and the length it takes you to cover that distance. Um, as your fitness improves, you will be able to walk longer and use more energy. So at the start, when I started back last year of walking every day, I was only walking 2K a day and notices that 2k was getting faster and faster each week so i increased the kilometers every two weeks to another k another 2k and longer and i find that it's just at ease now that you're walking as a level and improving your cardiovascular as well and endurance walking fast burns more calories per hour than walking slowly uh, so walking at a brisk pace is going to burn more calories because your circulation of the blood and oxygen around the body is, and the muscles are contraction more as well. But this doesn't mean you have to push yourself until your breakfast. So just as you're puffing slightly, it means your heart rate is increasing as well. So you're burning more calories as well. So that's the comfortable intensity for walking. How can you increase intensity for your walks? Um, I'm going to just stop sharing for a second there and ask ye what way would you um, increase the intensity of your walks daily? So if you want to pop it up on the chat and we'll see your answers. Just the interaction with the viewers. So walking in sand, yeah, you're using that muscles, walking up hills, perfect. Adding some incline hills. Brilliant. Wonderful works, very good. Some great answers there. Weight and weight, perfect. So I'm going to go back to the share again. So yeah, so a lot of you say tail walking at an incline. Um, it's probably the best way because you're using more your leg muscles as well and you're increasing your heart rate and lung capacity as well. Um, adding weights, a lot of you said adding weight effects Weighted fest and hand weights for assistance as you walk. Um, so building strength, walking for longer distance. So adding that kilometer on each, say each week, you're going another kilometer, timing that, and then increasing your speed gradually as well. So that probably come with the distance and interval is actually a great one as well. So you can say if you're walking for a while and you decided you wanted to just throw in a little jog. So you could do a three minute walk, one minute, 30 seconds jog, three minute walk, 30 seconds jog. And as the weeks go on, you're increasing, you're lessening the walk and increasing the jog. So it's like couch, just like couch to 5k. So you're building your endurance on 
the Ronin as well. And not a little challenge. And that is the in, increasing the intensity of your walks. Just some ideas as well. And he had some great ideas. Brilliant. Gone too fast. Um, so before you walk, so it's before any exercise of any kind, warm up is the most important part of any exercise routine. And why is that? Because it prepares the body for the upcoming workload. So it's preparing the muscles, the joints, and it's getting your heart rate up, your blood flowing, increases muscle elasticity, lubricates joints, reduce the chance of injury. So it's a major part in all those areas, increase blood flow to muscles, increases efficiency to most of the muscles. Prepare your body mentally. So it's preparing for if you're going to do a 5k walk today. So it's preparing your muscles to the level of awareness. And this usually includes, so just a couple strategies that include the warm up is light cardio. So normally you can just jog on the spot or jumping jacks. So then you have the range of mode movement. So mobility, uh, mobilization of all the major joints. So arm circles, for an example. So your mobilization of the shoulders. So you just nice circles of the arm. Activation of muscle groups. So body weight squats. So here's an example of a compound exercise, 10 reps by two sets. And on the next one, I just have an example of a warm up. So a dynamic warm up for five to 10 minutes, just to get the heart rate up before your walk, blood flowing around the muscles and your joints mobile. So high knees, jumping jacks, holding onto a chair or the countertop with side lateral leg swings, getting the hip mobilized, standing arm circles to mobilize the shoulders, and then you're walking high kicks or your inchworms. So just your some, there's just some samples of the warm up. There's loads more, but there are a few simple ones that you could do just before your any exercise routine. And why cooling down post work, walk or workout is just as important as a warm up. So wait a warm up becomes a cool down. So it's just as important as warming up. Because as the warm up increases your heart rate, similar cooling down after workout reduces your heart rate. And static stretching on the major muscle groups held for 20 to 30 seconds is probably the best, best thing to prevent injury, to just cool down the body, lower the heart rate, and again, it's mobility and flexibility stretching as well. So performing a cool down will decrease stiffness, muscle soreness and further injury. So you're preventing DOMS like delayed onset of muscle soreness and just preventing injury as well. So you're not too sore the next day and you can go for that walk again. I hope that helps. So that's just a little diagram of a couple of static stretching of all the major joints and muscles. And I hope that helps you. And just so instead book where we'll go back to the warm up for a second. What helped me was walking at the same time with the no, I'm not track now again. And instead, pace yourself so that you can still talk. And we're going to go on to software or walking. So, 
Sorry, I just lost track there for a minute. I'm back on track again. So main read as well important information is footwear for walking. So you don't need any equipment when you're walking. It's just if you have a good comfortable pair of runners, proper footwear. So walking is a low cost effective form of exercise. However, the wrong type of footwear of walking action can cause foot and shin pain, blisters and injuries to soft, to soft tissues. So i.e. muscles. Um, make sure your runners are comfortable, appropriate heel and arch support. So you have a nice raised heel, a comfortable and arch support as well in the runner. Um, remember to take light, easy steps. So what that means is you're going, starting with your heel to the ground and then you're following with your toes. So you're not going toes, heel, so you're going heel, toes. So you're, all your impact is going on the heels first and then a light toe. Uh, ground before, the toes, another two. Whenever possible as well, it does help to walk on grass. But when you're walking on concrete the whole time, it's just shock absorbing. So the impact of the concrete could prevent injury as well. So when possible in walking on grass is rather it's more beneficial. And that is the, probably the best benefits of the footwear. So just make sure you're comfortable starting out and just correct footwear because everything comes from the feet up. So if you have an injury in the foot, it will travel. And if you delay it, then it could get worse and travel up through the chain of the body. So making walking a pleasure. So it's probably a few photos taken of a few spots I enjoy walking. So my favorite spots are probably the nearest woodland from my house or the nearest park beside a river. So here are some suggestions that helped me walking. Uh, more enjoyable for form of physical and helps me to keep a huge interest in walking every day. So changing of scenery helps me. So I have a loop around my house which is 8K. So if I'm changing direction every second day, it's just gives me a different view of the walk. Uh, going to a nearest woodlands area. So you see the trees. So there's in hill climbs in the woodlands. There's just all, it's like a trail run. So it's different kind of steps as well. So you're working different kind of muscles in your body as well as you walk. Uh, like I said before, walking a dog, because they need to be walked every day, will get you out and you don't want them crying at you either. So just keep those happy. Uh, walking with close friends and family in your circle. So like I said, walking with a friend will get you out more as well because you have someone to talk to and you don't feel like you're walking it can be easier walking with somebody than walking on your own for some people. So you no know, walking with a friend or family is nice as well. And what mostly I enjoyed on my walks was listening to a good podcast or an audiobook. So you walk and learn at the same time. And you realize listening to a podcast actually you don't you get distracted actually from walking, so you could nearly walk for a longer period of time. And it's just a great way to actually learn as well. So it's interesting podcasts and books out there as well. Audiobooks is a great one to download some interesting books and learn and walk at the same time. Um, what the one last two books I actually were interested in was I actually got recommended from the courses Surrounded by Idiots, and I just finished it there a few last week, and it was actually found it very interesting. 
and it got me through a long walks as well at the same time. Um, just wish if anybody wants to pop on, were there any books or anything that you enjoyed or podcasts? Would you prefer podcasts, audiobooks, or even just listening to music as well? You can pop it up in the chat if you want. in a minute so while waiting is making walking interesting ways to keep your daily walk interesting so to keep your walks interesting if you want to stick close to your home and limit your walk walking to the neighborhood streets pick different routes so like what i said i have a route around day k i change directions each day every second day so you're not going the same direction and you probably find a bit boring then so you don't get tired at the same site um, if you feel unsafe walking alone ask your close friend family member and make it a regular thing it's always fun as well walk at various times of the day so like that making the routine so walking in the morning um, is Bound to see different sunrises or sunsets of the day, try something new. Early in the morning, seeing a good sunrise and do wonders as well. Or in the evening time and watching the sunset is actually a great option. Drive, what I said there, drive to your close woodland area, parks, or even the beach if you're lucky to live beside the beach and enjoy the views as you walk. Even the sea breeze is actually lovely as well, so really enjoy that. Um, explore what's going on around you. Notice the sky, the people. I know we can't see much people when we're during lockdown, but you do meet a lot of the locals around. I think, and it's nice even just to talk to them from a distance and just to check in and see how they're getting on and the okay and everything. So it's nice to check on in people as well. And just the different sounds of nature. So if you didn't like walk, listening to podcasts or audio, it's actually just nice to walk with no headphones and just listen because it's like you're re really just thinking and people become more creative as well when they're going out for walks where they actually come up with more ideas. So it's a great way to just to clear the head and you're thinking straight of new ideas and creativities for the next day. So just interesting ways to make your walking interesting. So I enjoyed this quote. So I added the quote in for today. It's walk yourself out of a bad mood. So if some days you don't feel like getting out of bed and it feels like Groundhog Day at the moment. So just shows study shows that even 10 minutes walk immediately boosts brain chemistry to increase happiness so you get delayed and getting out of bed and you just said no not today but if you put your runners on and just walk 10 minutes up the road it really just boosts boosts your mood and it does increase your happiness as well so just try try it for one one day and see how you feel. And so I enjoyed that quote. And dog walking. Again, I envious on the dog walking. The best walking partner because the dog that needs a red for exercise gives you motivation and probably the best PT you have. Walk every day. You may like the companionship still. If you don't have a dog, and not plan on get one in the near future, consider offering a walk to walk a neighbor's dog the time to time. So like a neighbor, if she's busy and they have a dog and they have no time to walk, it's probably a great option even just to interaction with your neighbor and helping them out and walking the dog now and again. And you probably actually enjoy it as well. So. 
just be mindful of other walkers. Always keep the dog on the leash when you can. Because some people are afraid of dogs, so they have to be kept on leash sometimes in public areas as well. And walking with friends. So walking with friends, I know keeping social protect connection during these tough times. So what I noticed last year is setting up like a Facebook group or WhatsApp group of like a virtual walking club. And it worked when we closed. So it's a leisure club I work in in a hotel in Kilkenny. And we organized a WhatsApp group. So back in January, so each month we had like a different challenge. And the month of February, we decided to walk, walk through February and seeing all the different sceneries and pictures and the motivation and progress of everyone was great. And I really kept a good connection of the work um, between the two hotels as well. So it was brilliant to see. And everyone got really into it. So, and they're still going. So it really made a good impact on their fitness and their levels of just getting moving and in their minds as well. So that's one good way of just setting up a social group in your local area, or even again, in your household doing a challenge board and increasing the steps each week. So it's like a little challenge amongst yourselves in the household, or again, in the, what, the WhatsApp group or social network, like Facebook group. It's just an idea for yourselves. And walking on our minds. What we think about the benefits of moving and exercise, we tend to look at the results we can see. So we tend to look more at the physical results, like our body image, and we don't tend to look at our minds. So yet walking for our mental health is just as important. And all you need is a suitable and comfortable pair of runners and you're good to go. So literally, like I said before, it's a weight bearing exercise and all you need is a good pair of runners, plenty of space and a nice scenic route. Uh, the benefits of walking on our minds is lower stress levels helps you sleep better. Like I said before, it's just helping your sleep quality improve. Also raises your self-esteem. So you feel more confident in yourself um, each day that you're improving your fitness, improving your overall health as well, and also aids in preventing and mental health problems, such as, they, such as anxiety and depression. Those are just the main two. And if we do it regularly, every day, it said not just help our cardiovascular fitness, but also help our mental health. So since the first lockdown in March 2020, we now walk an average of 10,000 steps daily to stay focused and positive. And we're probably just increasing the different, now that it's the 12th of April, and we're, the restrictions of the 5K limit has lifted, I'll be happy to even explore my own county now as well on more interesting walks like everyone else as well. So that's a little bit of positive for the day. And therapy. This is the best therapy anyone can ask for and it's probably the best that I would recommend on you as well because you just need a good walking, even just through the trees, a good podcast, and you're walking for an hour and you don't even realize. And it's just the best therapy as well. So I thought that image was perfect for that, the topic today. Um, so I'm just going to give you a break of my advice. So these are five ways to improve our well-being. So, <coughs> Um, there's just five ways, five things that could help us um, reconnect with people and 
helped just to improve our mental health every day as well. Even through these tough times, I know hopefully we're coming near the end of it, but just what helped me in the last year as well. So I'll just get you to share, stop sharing for a second. Oh, it's a great book. I must check that out, Marigold. Thank you. There's some great ones here. I'm um, just going to get the video for you now. So, if you can hear this, I hope you can. Did you know there are things we can do every day to improve our mental health and well being? Connect. Connecting is about building and strengthening relationships with the people around you. We can do this by spending meaningful time with people each day. Arranging a day out with friends, having lunch with someone you work with, joining a sports team in your local community. By giving time to these relationships, you feel happier and more secure, giving us a better sense of purpose. Be active. Look for ways to be active every day. I don't know what happened now. Find something you enjoy. It doesn't have to be a marathon, but something that suits your fitness and mobility. Cycling, gardening, walking, and dancing are all ways that we can get more active. Being active every day causes changes in our brain, which can positively affect our mood. Take notice. To take notice is to be present in the here and now. Pay attention to the world around you, nature, people, your thoughts and feelings. Becoming more aware of the present moment can help us enjoy the world around us and understand ourselves better. Keep learning. Keep learning is about learning new skills and information about topics that interest us. We can keep learning by trying a new recipe, signing up for a nighttime course, fixing that broken bike, or taking on a new responsibility at work. Learning can boost our confidence and self-esteem, help build a sense of purpose, and help us connect with others. Give. Giving is about small acts of kindness for other people. You could make someone a cup of tea, sign up for volunteering, or offer to help someone you know with a project. You could just ask a friend or someone you work with how they are and really listen to the answer. Giving back to others can create positive feelings and help us feel more satisfied with life. Each of the five ways have been shown to make a positive difference in how we feel and live our life. By including these simple actions every day, we can improve our mental health. So there's just five acts of five ways of improving your mental health, your well-being each day. So it's connect. So you're connecting with your friends, your family, even your friends that you haven't been in touch with in a long time. It's a great way, even out on a walk, is just to ring a friend and just reconnect again and catch up and check in on how they're doing and staying active. So it's probably the main thing to do during these tough times was actually staying active. And that's just even going out for that 10 minute, that 30 minute walk daily. And was the next one was keep learning. Um, learning new skills. So learn that new recipe learning like what I did was going back and learning progressing my personal training skills and every day is a learning so you're learning new things each day and give so giving and just caring that for others and make sure everyone is okay during these tough times as well because that you can do I have one more slide to do. We're nearly there. This is flying by. And walk for your body and mind. So more and more people, young. Sorry about that, I just lost that for a second. There we go. Must be in yet. So, 
walk for your body and mind. Um, so more and more people, young and old, are having have experienced mental health problems such as anxiety and depression. And whatever we can do to help it as fitness professionals, personal trainers, and instructors, is just support and keep proving that staying active can boost our moods. If we just every day just make sure our clients, our friends, our families are staying active of any kind and just make sure that they can talk as well, that you're always open. Um, Self-esteem and even open their minds that there is always brighter days ahead. So I know it's been a tough year, but there is hopefully light at the end of the tunnel and we're learning new ways of how to cope with things as well. So online is probably really opened our minds and getting interacting new ways as well through online. So there's always better days ahead as well. So remember this, some days are all, don't feel like getting out of bed or just having a bad day. Put your runners on and walk for 10 minutes outside while you, while you walk. Um, like I said, call that friend, reconnect that family member you haven't talked in a while and just reconnect as well in the nature. And that is nearly finished. So I hope you enjoyed my presentation today and have learned something new. Next time you feel anxious and overwhelmed, put your runners on and earphones in and walk the stress away. So I hope you enjoyed today and for any questions, 